Welcome to a spirited discussion, at least I think it will be, as it always is, with Angela Herman from Gulfstream Park and Canterbury Park, looking at how to bet the Oaks Derby double. Angela, thank you for your time on <laughs> Thurby Eve. Well, thanks. <laughs> yes, yeah, already a spirited discussion leading into this, yes. but it's a fun week. It's hard not to have spirited discussions with all the good racing, even aside from the Oaks and the Derby there's a really good race for any sort of specialty race that you enjoy diving into. And that's one of the best parts about these big Triple Crown weekends. They bring together so many of the best. We don't usually get to see that amalgamation of horses outside of like the Breeders' Cup. So right. I love these sorts of weekends. And it's just a lot to dive into. And uh, Churchill Downs has put together a wagering menu that uh, actually couples together some of those races uh the oaks derby double of course uh, one of the the big headliners there the two-day double uh but there's also a all three-year-old pick three and you and i have a couple of big prices we're looking at in that american turf so we'll get to that after we get to the classic races it does start on friday with the kentucky oaks and this is a race uh, i don't think you're alone based on what you told me and what i've heard uh it's a tough one to handicap I just, I mean, how can you be that big a fan of this crop at this point? They, <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of them as juveniles and the juvenile fillies. I, I haven't really found anybody that I adore now that they've turned three. I'm on South Lawn of the Kentucky Oaks because I thought that that would be a fair price on her. I, I don't think she'll be anywhere near eight to one. I would guess maybe five to one, something like oh, that. Oh, really? I, I think you'll get eight to one. You think so? Okay, that's fair. I just hear a lot of chatter about South Lawn. She drew well enough. And uh, I, any other horse that I was maybe considering drew way outside. So I, by default, got moved back to South Lawn. But admittedly, this is a group that I don't have a great grasp on as far as a horse that I can really hone in on. So if I'm going to do some sort of Oaks Derby double or the all two, three-year-old pick three, I don't think that I could single in on anybody in the Oaks. I would be more apt to do that in a different race. Well, and we'll get to your Derby pick in a moment, but it allows you, I think, because it's a horse a lot of people aren't keying on, even though he's a very likely winner, allows you to spread a little bit, uh, which is part of my strategy. I think South Lawn fits. I don't want to embarrass who said this, so I'm not going to say his or her name. But okay. I was told today that Wet Paint could be the next Rachel Alexandra, and I scoffed. It's like, she's the worthy favorite here, but no. I, I bring that up not to chastise the opinion, but to say if someone, and I really respect this person's handicapping, if they actually think that, others are going to think she's that special too. So if she's two to one, that helps the price elsewhere. Uh, my A's are South Lawn, Defining Purpose. And then I actually like a number 10 Flying Connection as well. I think she's a gate to wire threat from the outside under Florent Giroux, who's won the race from the outside under Monomoy Girl, granted she a better filly than Flying Connection, probably. Uh, but I do think she has a, a major chance if she's able to make the lead from the 10 post. So I'm on three prices, and uh, that gives me a little bit of excitement to play the Oaks Derby double. That's fair. And I think that I might expand even further than that. I don't think that I'll throw in a wet paint. I mean, if, if she becomes Rachel, that's great. But <laughs> It would be fun. You? Yeah, it's good I'll to see superstars. What's that? It's good to see superstars. Yeah, it's good to see them, I guess, before they were. But right, that's <laughs> I just I can't make that bold prediction at this point. I do know one person who would make that sort of comparison. I won't say his or her name. I'm gonna, maybe it's that, but that's nuts. But yeah. it was, yeah. it, was a, it was strong. But <laughs> I like hearing it because I don't love her at five to two. I certainly am not gonna love her at two to one. She can win, as the cliche goes, but, I mean, I think South Lawn's in the mix yeah. and the other two I mentioned. So, tough race, that, but could be rewarding. That comparison would be a different horse. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, no, I just, yeah. I, I see your point. I don't I don't have a set way of how the pace is going to go in here. I don't I don't know how much ground Dorf Vader's going to be able to save. I mean, I was trying to look at some of the horses that I was familiar with and see if they were in some sort of advantageous spot. They're not. So take that and throw it out the window. Now I'm just handicapping along with everybody else from a distance. It's harder to get creative that way because you don't, you don't see some of the idiosyncrasies where you could make an excuse or whether you could find a different angle on something. You just kind of see what everybody else does. So the Oaks, at least for me, is going to be a spread. It's going to have South Lawn probably feature like in an exacta box with some other prices, 
but it's just not going to be a race that I delve in on a whole bunch. When we do doubles, special wagers like that, yes, of course, I'm <laughs> going to use a handful of horses. But as far as typical plays, what I would do, a lot of verticals and things like that, that's just not going to be the race for me. Understood and uh, judicious. I appreciate the discipline. Uh, but <laughs> I do I do think you're going to get every bit of 8 to 1 on South Lawn. Uh, I think Pretty Mischievous might be lower than 10 to 1. So that helps prices elsewhere. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, don't don't be discouraged there. I think you're on the right horse. I just Kentucky Derby, the big one. And uh, I should tease this a little better to give you the big reveal. But I I'm excited. You are the first person I've talked to who actually has the favorite on top. And I don't say that disparagingly. I love it because I'm actually wondering if he drifts up from three to one, he's an even he's a play for me. Uh, three to one, maybe a little light, but my fair odds are seven to two. So he's not that far off. I don't understand how there are people out there that don't see him as the most likely winner. I could see how people would think that perhaps he's past his prime. And I, I have this discussion with people on Forte because they asked me about Forte. So <laughs> I, I... Well, you've, you've seen him in the flesh, right? Yeah, I mean, I've been there uh, a couple of times to see him. Mm. And I tried to beat him before. And Forte just keeps answering the questions that I have of him. And I, I don't know how many three-year-olds are going to get doing that at this point in their careers. It's just, it, it's tough to to arrange them in a, a pattern where Forte falls that far behind horses that either he's beaten or don't have the credentials that he does. You do have to get very creative and the Kentucky Derby is the race to do it, but Forte has too many of the tools that I was looking for even down the road, whether it was how he was finishing off his races, whether it was how he was handling crowds, whether it was how he was maintaining his flesh, anything like that. He he answered for me not only on the day in the Florida Derby and the Fountain of Youth, but what I would look for for a horse that still has something more to offer when they do get to Kentucky. And Forte is that. He's acting like himself up there. I think that's very important with three-year-olds when they get into this sort of circumstance. If they can keep with themselves, put in their typical race, and handle all the minutia that comes with it. And after seeing him and after seeing some of his competition when they're either schooling, whether they're out before a race or anything like that, I think that he'll handle that sort of circumstance better than a lot of them. And drawing the 15 hole doesn't deter me at all. In fact, it sends me further in his direction. So like you said, if you get seven to two, something like that, it's more than fair on the horse that brings the most to the table on paper and with some of the intangibles. So yes, I do have him. I, I believe, what did you say? I'm recalcitrant or something like that to take a favorite. I'm not usually one to settle in on this, but I'm that makes it all the more uh, eye opening. What's that? That makes it all the more eye-opening. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I usually try my best to try to get around. Speaking these of horses ones. you've seen, two fills, and it seems like anyone who has any association with actually having seen him run is picking him. You're not. <laughs> and I'm not sure the last derby starter to have come through Canterbury, uh, if any. But <laughs> regardless of what you think of him, it has to be pretty cool to know that he raced there. It's easy to root for him. It's the the three hole was a big drawback for me. I don't love any sort of inside draw for a horse that seems to need a little time to get rolling. He's not a small horse, but I I can't easily as judge two fills from his form last August as to how he's doing now rather than the horse right. recently. I would not be upset. I would be so happy for Jareth Loveberry. I mean, he's been through a lot to get to this point. Good guy, easy to root for as well, but. I mean, I, I'm not attached at the hip to Larry Rivelli. A lot of people in Chicago know him pretty well, so I can see why they would maybe let their heart get involved with the decision, but that's not to take anything away from two fills. You know, he's come up to this a different way, but right. a way that would work. And I don't, I thought he finished off well enough in the Jeff Ruby where I definitely give him a shot. Yeah, I'd say he's, he's in the shot category for me. I uh, certainly like him better than. Several others, but uh, I do think the race goes through the, the top Pletcher, too. Uh, I have Tappa Trice on top. Certainly wouldn't be shocked with, with Forte, but I just think they've shown they're the, they're the best uh, so far. And I'm going to wager accordingly, and Skinner's my long shot. So I feel like if he gets in there with one of them, can still make some money. He's one of mine, yeah. I, I do like Skinner quite a bit. Skinner is starting to become one of those wise guy horses, like confidence game. So Yes, well, <laughs> confidence game I do not like. Me neither. No, I, I've seen that. Yes, you've made it very, very clear. You are not a fan of confidence game, and that's fine. Even if it rains, nothing. 
No, the the no prep and no race beyond eight and a half. Just it's the Kentucky Derby. This is it's a crucible, ten furlongs. He just you just can't. I just can't see it happening. Really? So he doesn't fall under A, B, C, or shot. Any of those? Any no. of those columns for ticket making? If, Nothing. If he's uh, <laughs> if he's in the mix, I'm I'm out. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I'm probably in the same boat with you, but I I'm gonna use disarm too. Not yes, because no, of I'm with you there. Yeah, those are my two shots that I'm using with Forte. I feel like if you're gonna settle in on a horse with Forte, you've immediately got to eliminate anybody in that B group, I guess, as far as odds go, and immediately right. go to bombs to to incorporate them into any plays. So Skinner and Disarm are the two for me that fit in that respect. I'll have to keep an eye on the board and see what's happening with two fills because I just don't think he's going to make the cut for that. But I'll use him in supers and things like that and hope that the inside doesn't just become a complete pace lava fold. <laughs> uh, what's that? Fate, the pace volcano, I guess, that erupts, melts down, and goes away. But I think... Yeah, I think exactas, as we've talked about, are the way that I'm going to go with this. But as far as the pick three goes, I will probably stick with Forte, Disarm, and Skinner. Because I, I don't want to go any deeper than that using Forte. That'll be about it for me. All right. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, we're pretty locked in, I would say, on on the ones. Uh, other the, the big difference is Tampa Trice for me instead of Forte. But, you know, if, if Skinner wins and Forte second and Disarm's third, I'm going to have it. Like that's yeah. just the way I'm going to play the race. Uh, Oaks Derby double 280 combinations. I haven't done the math in my head cause it's 280 times 14, but there is an all three-year-old pick three, Pat day mile, American turf, Kentucky Derby. And I thought I was jazzy telling you about a 15 to one. I liked in the American turf. And then you came over the top. You're on a 30 to one. Let's give uh, let's give the people a bonus play here. Sure. Behind Enemy Lines is a very nice horse that's coming up from Gulfstream with a couple of other very nice ones who are going to take a lot more money. And they drew to the inside. Uh, Major Dude and Far Bridge are nice. I'm, I'm not going to disparage them at all for the races that they put in down at Gulfstream. But I don't think that the Cutler Bay is going to make a lot of replay reels or anything like that. <laughs> but Behind Enemy Lines was really impressive in there. And he was impressive overseas. If you get a look at his maiden race... Uh, he could have won by about 40. He just breezed by as soon as he was asked the question, really wasn't persevered with at all to get away from that group. And he backed that up with his first race in the U.S. Now, there wasn't a big gap. It's not like he needed a bunch of a time, time to acclimatize to America. But like you and I talked about, he handled everything very much in stride. He's willing to wait behind horses. He can sit close. He just shouldn't be 30 to 1, not with not with what he's shown thus far yeah. in a big short career. I actually, I'm going to write this down now because I know I'll forget when I'm scanning over because uh, I'm I'm a little, I'm somewhat deep uh, and it's all prices. So I'm not going to let a price you like beat me either uh, since I'm already against the favorite, but I'm right to your inside with number five, Johannes, who I love the fact that the best race, uh, second off the layoff, two turn on the turf, first time it had ever done that and just sort of erupted in the stretch. And now we get very similar conditions here at Churchill. It's going to be a crowded field. Rispoli didn't set the world on fire when he rode here last year, but we're getting 15 to one. We're going to get every bit of it against this group. So uh, for those looking to, and, and that's the beauty of, I, I think, like, you know, horse like Forte or Tapa Trice, you have a strong opinion in the Derby, a race everyone loves to spread, especially after last year. Oh, I caught Rich Strike with the all ball. Well, I'd rather this year, based on my handicapping, think maybe the prices could come in the Pat Day and the American Turf. So I'm going to be narrow in the Derby, and Johanna's definitely one I'm using. Uh, I will definitely throw him in the mix. I uh, I didn't like the fact that those two uh, horses, the other two that I mentioned, Farbridge and Major Dude, drew to the inside. So yeah. I'll take no, that. I don't like Major Dude on the rail. I mean, I, I definitely get why he's the favorite, and uh, – you know, especially if he runs well, that's probably going to get people more on the, the two fills bandwagon, such as it is. But I'm I'm with you. I think that's a tough draw for the top two choices. Yeah, I didn't care for it. And really between the two, I might take Far Bridge. But it, with those two aside, I'm still going to try to see if that doesn't cost them a little bit being drawn towards the inside. And they're going to be underlaid anyway. So I right. guess, yeah, we have so many good races to work with on the card. I'm not going to overdo the Derby and overdo trying to 
beat Forte. I've done that before, not doing that anymore. And just focus my uh, my plays elsewhere as far as price shopping, like you said, and just try to find one or two key horses towards the end of it that can level things out if Forte is going to be my play in the Derby. Great. Well, right. I think that sounds like a good plan. How many people show up at Canterbury on Derby Day? You know, I, I haven't done a head count. I believe last year was 8,031. No, I, I usually it's been so different over the last couple of years because of COVID restrictions. But yeah. on a normal Derby Day for simulcast, on, on a, I don't know, maybe five, three to five. But there's just been no normal day over the last Right, week. been a so, while. That's a hard gauge. And and we've also opened before on Derby Day. So it's all very yeah. different based on the years that we've had. But we do right. get a solid simulcast crowd. If you do want to come and join us at Canterbury, you're going to have to come hang out on one of the first two floors. Um, the third floor is sold out, so we expect a decent crowd. But you can also bet in in advance. And some of, sometimes that's going to be your best option. And we just don't, I mean, we have as many machines as we have. But yeah, you can also bet it in advance, watch it, and then come back and collect later. Collecting's fun. Collecting's good. Yeah, I, I love handing out money. People ask me, like, oh, God, you always take my money. No, I much prefer handing out money. <laughs> Trust me, all of us much prefer handing out money. And if we don't have enough, we'll go find more. Mm -hmm. So I love that you asked me to come on and do this. I hope that it, if nothing else, Behind Enemy Lines makes his way onto a few tickets and maybe reward some people at a price. Uh I would love that at 30 to one morning line and we'll see what happens and uh, no chalk in the Oaks too. So we'll have some looks for sure. Angela, I really appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Otherwise they no chalk in the pick forte, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. It's always fun to talk to you. I hope that uh, we come back and collect ourselves. All right. We, uh, collecting would be good and we will collect our thoughts also later in the month. Canterbury opens late May Memorial Day weekend. Uh, looking forward to working with them throughout the meet. Until then, she's Angela. I'm Ed. Good luck.